Good morning, everyone. This is Jeff Bershaw from Vonti Destinations, and you've joined us for Live from Edinburgh, of Vonti's Great Britain. Uh, I've got, we've got uh, Maggie Anderson in Edinburgh itself. Uh, we have Lisa Sholin uh, from Visit Britain. Uh, she's down in, in Los Angeles, and myself and Gabby Anderson are in uh, Portland, Oregon, in our headquarters. So we're going to begin this presentation here, and what we've just Quickly, the images here, uh, we've got a uh, couple of images from uh, England. Uh, down the bottom left is Scotland, and we'll do a wonderful, Maggie's got a wonderful presentation on Scotland, and uh, in the bottom right is a picture, a wonderful picture of the Wales coastline. Uh, but quickly, for those of you who aren't really, really familiar with the Bonte, this is a wonderful image from our, of, up Edinburgh, from our, the cover of our brochure. And Avanti is your one-stop travel source. Uh, we excel uh, at offering destination expertise with our reservation staff, uh, as well as connecting the dots, making your clients' uh, vacation seamless. So air, car, rail, transfers. Um, you know, we do some small ship cruises and some specialty places. Uh, we do have a couple of small escorted group options, do a lot of pre and post cruise. Uh, we offer travel protection. For those of you who don't have uh, travel protection uh, as a preferred partner uh, from your own um, uh, partnerships, um, that's something that we can provide you. And something that I always like to talk about is, is that you can add a travel agent fee up to 15% gross of the total of the booking. So just something to always think about and uh, you know, keep us in mind. Uh, really quickly, even though we are going to be focused on Great Britain and, and Scotland uh, specifically as well, uh, we do a lot in Europe. And these we've got a couple of new destinations, uh, most notably uh, Malta and Slovenia. Uh, but as you can see, we've expanded. Uh, if you look through our brochure, we've expanded a lot of options. Um, you know, Gabby uh, has worked hard to bring some new stuff into the mix, and we're going to look at a couple of those at the end of this presentation today. But first off, we're going to hand it over to Lisa Sholin down in Los Angeles, and she's going to go overall as far as Great Britain in general and some of the things that they've got going on uh, for 2017. Lisa, it's all yours. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, it's great to join you today. And uh, we are excited to participate with Avanti. Avanti is a great partner of Britain and uh, delighted to join you. So first, I'm just going to start off to give you an overview of who Bit Visit Britain is, what our mission is. Uh, we're the national tourism agency responsible for marketing Britain globally. And our mission is to inspire the world to explore Britain. And uh, part of that is also to increase regional and seasonal spread. So that means all throughout England, Scotland, and Wales, and Northern Ireland, as well as all throughout the year. Now, uh, we are happy to say that 50% of the Americans that are coming to Britain are actually uh, repeating a trip. And that's really important because uh, that just shows you how much opportunity is available to you. Um, we are also thrilled to say that the, uh, California is the number one state delivering uh, visitors into Britain. Uh, actually, three states provide one-third of all inbound visits, and that's California, New York, and North Carolina. And North Carolina is actually a, a new state that's grown over time. Uh, so it's just important to know as far as where the bulk of the visitors are coming from. Now, over half of all American holiday visitors are making a repeat visit, and um, we've just done recent uh, research, and Americans their overall sentiment towards uh, Britain is extremely positive. Um, and all of this information, we're sharing this with you because you can really be confident in selling Britain right now. Britain has become more affordable than ever thanks to that fantastic exchange rate right now. Uh, the US dollar to the pound rate is down to about $1.23. That's the lowest monthly average in 30 years. So on top of that, there are incredible air deals. So 2017 is really an unprecedented time to make a dream trip to Britain. Uh, so just keep that in mind when we're giving you this whole update. 
So let's move on to exploring England, Scotland, and Wales. Now, I just want to remind you how compact Britain is. The UK is a small country with a big personality. It's compact and it's easy to explore through air and rail. So it fits very nicely inside uh, the uh, state of California. So when you think of your client you know, flying from London to another area or driving or taking the train, you can think of it as you know, from London to Edinburgh is similar to LA to San Francisco. Now, air access into Britain is incredible. We have obviously London Heathrow, which is world famous, one of the busiest airports in the world. But we have uh, great airports throughout Britain. Um, obviously Gatwick, but we also have Cardiff in Wales, Birmingham in um, the heart of England, Manchester, which gives you a gateway into northern England, uh, Newcastle, and then obviously into Scotland uh, with Glasgow and Edinburgh. And um, the nice thing about that is there's also new routes that have opened up. So we have uh, new routes coming in March. Virgin is going to be launching a San Francisco to Manchester uh, at the end of March. Um, BA uh, is kicking off uh, San Jose to London Heathrow, um, actually earlier last year. Uh, and then also in 2017, Delta is going to be launching Portland to Heathrow three times a week. And Virgin is kicking off Seattle to London Heathrow in March. Uh, so there's also you know, low-cost carriers like Norwegian, WOW, Thomas Cook. So there's lots of opportunity right now with, uh, with air access. And that makes a, you know, coming into Britain easier than ever. Uh, but then also, if you look at rail, uh, you can get from London to Manchester in two hours, and then you've got you know, a gateway to northern England. Um, Edinburgh, you can take the train uh, from London. Uh, it's about four and a half hours. It's a beautiful journey. So it's a great way to experience Britain and to see the countryside from the comfort of the beautiful train. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview. Oh, come on. Come on, slide. For some reason, there we go. OK. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview um, of Britain through the lens of film and music and um, literary uh, viewpoints, because those are huge interests, and they're a big driver for Americans visiting Britain. Um, and so. Even if somebody isn't going to you know, create uh, a customized itinerary or pick a tour that's specifically focusing on these things, they're definitely things that will enhance their trip. So, and it's also a great way to get people to travel to London and beyond so that they experience the, the coast and the countryside of England, Scotland, and Wales. So film tourism in general is a, um, a huge business. Um, and according to the British Film Commission, one in 10 foreign visitors come to the UK as a result of seeing uh, the country depicted in a film. Uh, and we've done research, um, Visit Britain has, uh, as far as 40% of potential visitors uh, are very likely to visit places that they've seen in film uh, or on TV. So it's a great opportunity to look at uh, helping clients create a vacation on location, or what they call set jetting. Uh, so that they can follow in the footsteps of their favorite stars. Um, 2017, we actually have some uh, new films coming out that will be um, traveling throughout uh, England, Scotland, and Wales, like King Arthur and Star Wars Episode Eight, and also Paddington 2. But I'll fill you in more on that later. Uh, we also have a great media guide uh, that focuses on film that anyone can use, uh, and they're all available on our media site and it uh, gives all kinds of detailed information on all of the locations throughout Britain uh, that people would be interested in. Now, Harry Potter alone uh, covers all of England, Scotland, and Wales. There are locations throughout, uh, from the Highlands of Scotland to the coast of Wales, Oxford, you've got the University of Bodleian Library uh, played a part um, of Hogwarts Library, uh, Oxford's University's uh, 
it's, it's magnificent. Uh, it starred in three Harry Potter films and uh, the Christchurch College, which, which is when uh, Harry first saw Hogwarts. And then also Laycock Abbey, it's where they shot Professor Quirrell's Defense Against the Dark Arts uh, classroom and the potions class. There we go. Uh, now in Scotland, this is the Glenfinnan Viaduct. Uh, it's, you can take the um, uh, train across this landscape and uh, it's the Jacobite steam train, and it's used as Hogwarts Express in the movie. And then this is Annick Castle, and it's in North, New, sorry, <laughs> Northumberland, England. That's up in Northern England, and it doubles as the Wizard Academy Hogwarts, and uh, it appears in the two first uh, Harry Potter films. And you can actually go there now. You can bring uh, families there, and they do broomstick flying lessons. So the whole family can uh, broomstick train, and they have magic shows and custom costumed guides and behind-the-scenes stories from when the Harry Potter crew were filming. And then this is Durham Castle, also up in northeast England. Uh, it was the chapter house uh, for Professor McGonagall's uh, classroom, and uh, that's where he taught the young wizards to turn animals into water goblets. And it's also inside the Norman Cathedral is where you, uh, where Harry Potter um, set Hedwig the Owl flying in the first film. Now, uh, all of this information is actually on our consumer site, but we also have detailed, informa detailed information that we can share uh, for, for you if you need to give um, uh, detailed itineraries and things like that or work with a client that's really interested in it. So it's available. You can show them on the consumer site. We can give you links to all of this. And, uh, and then also, if somebody doesn't have time to go traveling to other parts of Britain, they can take the Warner Brothers Studio Tour, uh, which is um, wonderful. It's just a 20-minute train ride outside of London. And they can visit the studios and see where the Harry Potter film series was filmed. And um, there's walking tours and authentic sets and all behind-the-scenes uh, secrets. Now, these are just a few of the other films to give you an idea of some of the uh, other locations in the countryside where things were filmed. Uh, Atonement was filmed at the Stokes Day uh, Court in Shropshire. And Shropshire is just three hours from London. It's in the West Midlands, and it borders on Wales. It's incredibly beautiful, and that's where Kira Knightley, uh, the heroine from Atonement, um, uh, experienced. Um, the filming, and tours of the property can be taken, and it reveals secrets um, behind the scenes of the making of the movie. And then the theory of everything, uh, Cambridge uh, was just in a great, great location for this filming, and um, it follows uh, the professor Stephen Hawking, uh, his true story. So you get to see the cobbled streets and historic colleges, uh, and, and even go punting on the camp. Uh, next, uh, next up is uh, Paddington, and uh, the sequel is actually uh, due out uh, later this year. Uh, but there's a, also a Paddington Bear bus tour that you can take uh, in London, and that is at uh, Paddington Station and Marlebone Station and Notting Hill, which were some of the, the key areas that were filmed. And then also you may have heard of the new series uh, on Netflix. It's called The Crown. Uh, that has just won uh, Golden Globes, and it's nominated for um, other things for uh, the Oscars. And we also have uh, itinerary uh, suggestions for that as well. So if you're interested, just let us know. And moving on, I'm just showing you some of the other myriad of locations throughout Britain, including um, Game of Thrones, uh, Skyfall up in Scotland, uh, Atonement, like I was saying, for Shropshire. Uh, Downton Abbey, of course, and Far From the Matting Crowd. If you haven't seen that, it's gorgeous. That takes place in um, southern, southwest England in, in Dorset. Now, of course, Downton Abbey, it's the gift that keeps on giving. There are so many people that still locally in, it, within Britain as well as uh, internationally that come to uh, Britain just to see Highclere Castle. And uh, although it can be... Uh, tough to, to get in because of limited time periods that, that it's op actually open to the public. 
there are uh, tours that can be arranged, and you can uh, reach out to Avanti to uh, help organize that. Now, also on our website, you can find uh, information about all of the influential writers and artists that uh, grew up in Britain and made such an impact on all of us, like Shakespeare and Jane Austen, the Bronte Sixers, uh, Charles Dickens, Roald Dahl. Uh, the list of great British authors and poets is infinite. Uh, so here you can just get some ideas, but again, we can give you um, suggested itineraries and uh, locations on the map so you can see where they all are. Um, 2017, actually, uh, England has designated the uh, Year of Literary Heroes, and we are celebrating the 200th anniversary and commemoration of Jane Austen's life uh, that will be celebrated on July 18th. But there's actually activities and events going on uh, all year round, and especially uh, in her home area, which is in Hampshire. It's just a one-hour train ride from London. Um, you can visit her home. It's, it's a really wonderful experience uh, and learn about um, her life growing up. Uh, 2017 is also uh, the 20th anniversary of the Harry Potter book series. So um, that's a great uh, chance to uh, visit other areas of Britain as well. Okay. Oh, come on. It's all right, Lisa. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> oh, come on. Great. Okay. So there you see all of those lovely locations. And like I said, I'm happy to, we've got little cheat sheets and uh, maps that I can send you with links to all of these locations. Now, moving on to uh, music. Uh, Glasgow is the uh, UNESCO City of Music. Uh, Liverpool was named uh, the UK's newest UNESCO City of Music. So from Adele to Coldplay to icons like the Beatles or the Rolling Stones, David Bowie, or Bowie if you're uh, in Britain, that's how you pronounce it, um, they all called London their home at one point or another. And all over Britain, you can see the most incredible musical performances. And it doesn't matter if you're into rock or hip hop or classical, uh, there are uh, concerts taking place throughout Britain and in all different types of uh, places. Like at the bottom of this um, culture is great picture, that's actually in Cornwall. So that's the um, Southwest England, the Manac Theater. So here again, just want to show you some of the locations throughout Britain um, and landmark festivals and events. And obviously, your clients are going to be getting very hungry while they're traveling throughout Britain. Uh, and obviously, they can um, count on classic afternoon tea. But also, there are um, incredible places uh, in England, Scotland, and Wales uh, that are not just about London, not just the seven, seven um, sorry, not just Michelin star restaurants. But uh, even Bray is just a city outside of London, close to Win uh, Windsor, and it has seven Michelin star restaurants. So um, there's all kinds of regional specialties from the coast to the countryside. Um, London um, has everything, every type of um, uh, type of food. Um, and when you go out to the countryside and into the coast, you've got incredible seafood. Uh, incredible cheeses and um, uh, ciders and all kinds of things that are locally produced, organic, uh, farm-to-table experiences. So you can have, um, you know, a gastropub lunch that is a five-star meal. So, but you know, you're not going to pay the price of a Michelin star restaurant. So it's just a great way, you know, food is culture. It's a great way to experience Britain uh, and meet locals and. Um, get out of those chain restaurants and things that you know you you could go to anywhere. And just talking about alcohol alone <laughs> in Britain, obviously Britain's famous for its pubs, uh, incredible um, ales and whiskeys and ciders and and even wine. Um, Southeast England has actually won some uh, blind tasting. Uh, competitions for their sparkling wine, uh, and they beat out 
uh, the Champagne region of France. So um, it's not what you would think uh, these days. Uh, there's incredible experiences with um, wineries and wine tastings and um, uh, places that you can have cooking classes. Uh, so this, you know, similar experiences that you would have in uh, the wine country in California, uh, you can experience in um, uh, in England. So again, this is all on our uh, on our. Uh, consumer site. And then just a, a wrap up, uh, Wales is going to be cel uh, celebrating the year of myths and legends. Uh, so they'll be um, promoting uh, legendary stories, epic adventures. Uh, we're just getting all the details now um, so we can share that with you if you'd like to incorporate it uh, in your uh, upcoming offering to your clients. And uh, just some new things that are coming on uh, later this year. Uh, in 2017, um, we've got the Victoria and Albert Museum opening up in Dundee. Uh, there is a new cruise port that's going to be opening up in Greenwich in 2018. And also, uh, there's going to be a new Paramount Pictures theme park in southern England, in Kent. And uh, just a recap of uh, Visit Britain's trade resources. Uh, check out our uh, trade website, visitbritain.com slash trade. It's your one-stop shop. It's got links to um, our retail shop, uh, our Brit agent programs, uh, imagery, and then also you see here there's a discount code that you can take advantage of if you're buying Oyster cards or other things like that, uh, transport uh, right on the, um, on the site. And if you're a Brit agent, you get a 8% discount on some of those things. Um, one thing that's new about the Oyster card is that uh, now there are lots of added value to the card, so um, free uh, tours and discounts on uh, restaurants, uh, and also the night tube is available now. So on the weekend, it's open 24 hours a day on Friday and Saturday, so lots of fun and an easy way to get around. Um, and OMGB, hashtag oh my Great Britain. This is Visit Britain's new campaign. It's promoting Great Britain, home of amazing moments, and it invites travelers to create their own amazing moments and share it by using the hashtag OMGB. So these are moments that you can't wait to share with your friends and family. It's not just the typical tourist spots, so unique, unique experiences that really affect you emotionally, experiences that give you chills or make you laugh till you cry. So come fill the frost in the air as morning mist creeps over Hadrian's Wall. Scream while you're riding Europe's fastest zip line in Wales and get chills when you hear the roar of the crowd at Manchester United. These are just a few of the amazing moments in Great Britain, but your clients will create their own. So now I'm going to pass it on to my lovely colleague Maggie Anderson, who is live in Edinburgh, and I'll let her take it on from here. Perfect. Thank you so much, Lisa. Oh, I've You're just welcome. skipped through that already. Good morning, everyone. Well, it's um, evening here, so um, yeah, I'm a bit, a bit ahead of you guys, but you're still starting your day off. So I want to thank you all so much for your time today. Um, I'm the Assistant Market Manager for uh, North America with Visit Scotland, so um, it's my job to, to help you um, uh, develop product, bring your clients to Scotland, and really sort of highlight what we have in this beautiful country. Now, Lisa has already touched on a few things um, in her presentation. So as she said, Scotland uh, and the UK in general, with the pound being um, at a really good point for, for you guys, for the dollar at the moment, Scotland's never been, been more affordable. Um, and as you can see on this beautiful picture of Loch Shiel, it's also a beautiful calm, tranquil, and safe destination. So absolutely, the year for your clients to come to Scotland is now. And we've just had some great figures um, come through today um, about last year's um, sales. And we're really happy to say that the US is once again our largest overseas market and it continues to grow. Um, Scotland just seems to be a really popular destination with an American visitor. And uh, we obviously love them all to come over. Um, so just some key facts about Scotland. Here on the slide, we have over 790 islands with only 10% of them inhabited. Uh, we've got lots of lochs, which is the, the Scottish word for lake, 
of course, castles, um, of, the, of which many are open to the public. And then golfers are spoiled for choice in Scotland, with 550 golf courses to play. Um, our national drink is whiskey, which I'll tell you a little bit more about in this presentation. We have six UNESCO World Heritage Sites and two national parks, which are the Cairngorms National Park and Loch Lomond and the Trossachs. So, as Lisa said, the UK is very compact and Scotland's even smaller. We're only a small part of it. So this slide gives you a really good idea of how easy it is to travel around and how much your client can cover within just one trip in Scotland. So um, that pointing out, we also have really good bus services and nearly 50 of Scotland islands have scheduled ferry links as well. So most of these ferries can carry cars and they can book in advance with uh, Caledonian McBrain. As Lisa mentioned, the real network is really great as well, and we've got really frequent services within Scotland, but also connecting to England to make, your make it really easy for your client to do both destinations on their trip overseas. And then we're, we're really proud to say as well that it's never been easier getting to Scotland. So again, we've had some really great new flights last year with um, Delta flying into Edinburgh. We've had indirect flights with Wow Air and Iceland Air introduced. And um, this year, we're really happy to say that there's going to be a new direct flight from New York JFK going into Glasgow as well. So our research shows that today's traveler is looking to be able to feel the mystery of the past, have a spiritual connection with Scotland, and really feel at home. So the landscapes, traditions, history, and castles of Scotland are the main reasons for a visit to Scotland um, for the US visitors. So therefore, we're really excited to say that this year is our year of history, heritage, and archaeology. And it's the perfect fit for consumers who are looking to emerge in that rich Scottish history. So the theme year will celebrate the richness of Scotland's tangible and intangible heritage, so our buildings, visitor attractions, archaeological sites, as well as our diverse stories, traditions, and culture. Now, Avanti has developed a great program, a 17-day Year of History, Heritage, and Archaeology program, which I'm sure Jeffrey is going to tell you a little bit about later. Now, just some product ideas for uh, related to the theme year. Um, and I want to highlight on this slide uh, the Bonnie Prince, Charlie, and Jacobite. So, the Jacobite legend has experienced a new, renewed global interest due to the Outlander book series and television series. So this year, the National Museum of Scotland will launch a major new exhibition, which tells the real story of Bonnie Prince Charlie and the rise and fall of the Jacobites. Now, the exhibition will run from 23rd of June until the 12th of November, and it's absolutely a must-see for any Outlander fan. To stay with the Outlander theme, many people have found themselves caught up in the mystical and spellbinding Outlander series. So um, if you, I've seen it myself as well, and they've just been filming uh, in Edinburgh this week. So I've been trying to get out of work all week, but they wouldn't let me go, unfortunately, to see Jamie. But uh, yeah, your clients can come and experience the land that uh, inspired Diana Gabaldon. So you can come and explore an ancient standing stones, dramatic castles, and our stately homes. And it's shot entirely, uh, season one and two are shot entirely in Scotland. And we've created this film map, which shows you exactly where the locations are and where your clients can go. So you can see that on the link there, but I'm happy to share it with you after the presentation as well. So another exciting event that I want to mention is um, the military tattoo, which is obviously our sold out event each year in August, and it takes place on the Esplanade of Edinburgh Castle. This year, the theme of uh, the military tattoo is a splash of tartan. So what this will do is we'll have each year will be there will be a specific clan that will be in the spotlight and clan chiefs will be invited as well. And what we're hoping to see is that it will inspire the US visitor with Scottish ancestry links to come back to Scotland and explore their ancestry and visit the, the military tattoo on the evening that their clan is, is hi highlighted. So now I'd like to take you on a quick journey through Scotland. You might be familiar with some of the regions, but I want to touch on some of them just uh, again to highlight. They're all 
unique from one another and they're all easily accessible, as I said, in just one trip to Scotland. So I'll start with our capital city and I'm sure those who've ever been to Scotland and have been to Edinburgh will agree that it's one of Europe's most attractive historic cities. Um, so it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site in itself, the old town and new town, and it also gives you the chance to experience some of the city's royal attractions, such as the Holyrood Palace and the Royal Yacht Britannia. It's famous for many annual festivals, so in 2017, the Fringe and the Edinburgh International Festival, which is the world's largest in art festival, is celebrating its 70th anniversary. So it's going to be a very, very busy August. Um, and as you will know, accommoda accommodation uh, is always a little bit tricky in August. So make sure that if you do have clients that want to come to Aug uh, Edinburgh in August, that you book them well in advance. Um, some highlights that you can't miss when you're in Edinburgh are obviously the Scots Whiskey Experience, which houses the largest whiskey collection in the world, the Royal Yacht Britannia, which is the former Royal Yacht of the British Monarch, Edinburgh Walking Tours, which really gives your clients the opportunity to e explore that uh, rich history of Edinburgh, and then the Spirit of Scotland show, which is where you can experience um, the Scottish culture. Then that brings me to Glasgow, which is Scotland's largest city, and it's widely seen as one of the world's most friendly cities. Um, it has a long-standing reputation for its live music scene, and it also has an amazing portfolio of more than 20 museums and galleries. Now, it's completely different from Edinburgh, and that's why visiting both cities in one trip makes it such an, uh, an interesting city. As you can see, these are some of the unique attractions in Glasgow, with the house of an art lover in the left top corner, which is by the famous Scottish uh, architect Charles, Charles Rennie Mackintosh. Then there's Kelvin Grove Art Gallery, which is one of Scotland, Scotland's most popular free attractions, and People's Palace and the Riverside Museum. It's worth mentioning that a lot of the museums in Scotland are actually accessible uh, for free, uh, but they do offer out-of-hour tours or private tours for, for, an, uh, for an extra fee. And that brings me to the Highlands, which is probably the most well-known area of Scotland. Um, it's home to the highest peak, the most famous loch, which is Loch Ness, and their most photographed castle, which is the Aileen Donan Castle. But it has much more to offer, such as the North Coast 500, which is Scotland's answer to Route 66. And the route starts in the northern city of Inverness, and it weaves along the west coast to Applecross, and then north towards Torridon and Ullapool. The Highlands is also home to the world's only malt whiskey trail, so your clients can take um, this trail and pass six, uh, sorry, seven world-famous work, working distilleries, as well as a cooperage. And then finally, you can't miss the Isle of Skye. Um, Isle of Skye has some stunning locations, such as the Old Man of Store and the Fairy Pools. And last year, it, um, it got some uh, world um, worldwide attention because it was the backdrop of the big, the big Friendly Giant, the new film that came out last year. And Lisa already shared a great image of the, the Glenfinnan viaduct, but this is the viaduct where the Jacobite train, which is used in Harry Potter, crosses. Then we'll get to Stirling, which is located centrally in Scotland, and it's very easy to reach from both Edinburgh and Glasgow. And a must-see attraction in the area is Stirling Castle, which is one of the largest and most important castles, both historically and architecturally. Then, as I mentioned, there's Loch Lomond and the Trossachs National Park, which is an incredible place to visit um, for any type of visitor. Uh, you can either enjoy a cruise, or you can explore the, the wide variety of wildlife, or maybe if you're a bit more adventurous, you can climb one of the 21 Munros, which is the Scottish word for mountain. It, all, it is also home to the World Heritage Site of the Antonine Wall, which, is the mo which once was the most northern frontier of the Roman Empire in Britain. That brings me to Fife, which is situated just about an hour's drive north from Edinburgh. And if you guys can see on the map, I've highlighted in a bit dark purple where the area that I'm talking about. So the area is full of history, history with castles, palaces, museums, and galleries, but it's probably most well known for the old course and the St. Andrew, um, Andrews. So I will touch, um, 
it is known as the home of golf, which I will talk about a little bit later as well. Now, this is an image of the royal borough of Kuros, which was the backdrop of the fictional village of Krangemuir in uh, Outlander, and it's also located in Fife. That brings me to Aberdeenshire. So with over 300 castles, stately homes and ruins, Aberdeenshire is unsurprisingly known as Scotland's castle country. So if you have clients who are keen to explore castles, Aberdeenshire is absolutely the place to go. So Visit Scotland has created a castle trail, which takes your clients along 19 different castles. And the full castle trail can be found on our website. And I'll make sure that I, I share all the links with you after the presentation as well. Then our most northerly island, Orkney and the Shetlands, and with a unique culture and history, Orkney has a strong identity of its own, and it actually has great transport links with the rest of the UK, and it can be um, reached by either plane or ferry. Attractions include Scatter Bray, Ringer Brogar, the Italian Chapel, and Old Man of Hoy. And Shetland's actually made up of over 100 islands, and geographically it's closer to Norway than it is the mainland Scotland. But for your clients who are a bit more adventurous and want to see a different area of Scotland, I would definitely recommend um, visiting these islands as it's a different world from anything else that they've ever seen. Going down south again, we'll, we'll head off to Ar Argyll and the Isles, which is located west of Scotland and just south, um, and it has 23 inhabited islands, including Mull, Iona, um, sorry, Mull, Isla, Jura, and Butte. And it's one of the best places in Scotland to see iconic wildlife and unspoiled white beaches. Key attractions include Iona Abbey, which is a beautiful preserved medieval abbey. That brings me to Ayrshire and Arran, which is really easy to reach from Glasgow. And it's about a half an hour's drive. And some great attractions you can see here on the image is Killane Castle in the left top right, um, or the Royal Troon Golf Course, or the Scottish Dark, uh, Dark Sky Park, for example. Um, Isle of Arran is a great alternative if your visitors want to, uh, if your clients want to visit a island when they're out in Scotland, but they don't want to go to the busy sky, because Isle of Arran has everything to offer. So it has a distillery, it has a castle, it has food and drink. It's got beautiful hikes and amazing sceneries. Now, this just gives you an idea of what your clients will be expecting when they go to Arran. So it's unsurprisingly unsur called Scotland in miniature. So on to some of the more, like the lesser known areas, which but really easy accessible from both Edinburgh and uh, England, is the Scottish borders. And it's part of the lowlands and known for its green landscapes many stately homes, uh, haunted castles and abbeys. So the newly opened Borders Railway, which was opened by the Queen in 2015, connects Edinburgh really easily with this area. And it also gives attractions, uh, it gives your clients access to attractions such as um, Rosslyn Chapel, which is known from the Da Vinci uh, Code, Abbotsford House, which is the home of Sir Walter Scott, um, and then Melrose Abbey and Jedburgh Abbey as well. Dumfries and Galloway, I'll touch on really shortly. Um, it's green landscapes inspired writers such as Robert Burns, and it's a beautiful area, including uh, castles such as Drumlanrig Castle, um, sweet, um, attractions such as Sweetheart Abbey and Calavera Castle. It's also a great place for outdoor uh, adventures. And then finally, the Outer Hebrides, which is a less traveled area, but mainly because of its remote nature. Um, and your clients can enjoy, enjoy untouched beaches, countryside, as well as a fascinating history and unique island culture. So the main islands include Isla Barra, where you can fly from Glasgow to and land on the beach. And it's a beautiful flight. Um, South US, North US, Isla Harris, and Lewis. Then I'll, I'll quickly touch on what makes Scotland such a unique destination uh, for the US visitor, particularly. So ancestry is a huge draw for the US market, and it's hugely important for Visit Scotland. And it's estimated that around 50 million people all over the world claim Scottish ancestry, from which almost one fifth live in the US. So it's a huge opportunity. Um, an ancestral trip can mean anything from 
coming to Scotland and research your ancestry with the help of the genealogist or individually by researching the, uh, the records at Scotland's people. But there's also many ancestral related activities that your clients can do, such as history reenactments. They can visit one of the many Highland Games that take place in summer, um, all the way from May through to September. Or they can attend their own Highland Games and do a great bonding ex um, experience with their friends or family. As mentioned, Scotland's ho known as the home of golf, with the first record of golf in Scotland dating back to the 15th century. And with 550 golf courses, we have more courses per head than any population anywhere in the world. Now, Scotland hosted the Ryder Cup in 2015, and we will host the next big event in 2019, which is um, the Solheim Cup. And signature golf courses are St. Andrews, Glen Eagles, and Carnoustie, for example. I will talk about whiskey, and that, that will be me. Um, so Scotland's national drink is whiskey, and it's been distilled in Scotland since 1494. And Scotland's split into five whiskey distilleries, and uh, where a whiskey is made can really have a huge bearing on its flavor. And paying a visit to a distillery, therefore, doesn't only give your clients the opportunity to taste whiskey, but it will also learn them more about the environment and the people that live in the area. So some great experience that your visitors can enjoy related to whiskey are they can blend their own whiskey at Glengoyne di Distillery, they can bottle their own whiskey at Ochentoschen Distillery, um, they can do food and drink, uh, food and whiskey pairing at the Scots Whiskey Experience, for example. So loads of things to do around our national drink. And if anyone wants to know more about golf or more about whiskey, I have separate uh, webinars that I will be able that are recorded and that I will be able to share with you. So I would like to conclude my presentation by pointing out our trade website, which has information and itineraries that are free for all of you to use. Um, so we also have a newly developed digital media library, which you can create a login for, and it gives you access to some of the stunning images that I've used during this presentation. And if you'd like to learn even more about Scotland, I invite you to start the Scots Agent Program, which is a five seminar online destination program. And of course, I hope to welcome you all to Scotland soon, which is obviously the best way to explore the country. Thank you so much for your time, everyone. Thank you, Maggie. Wonderful. Um, wonderful picture of the military tattoo, uh, which we do right. offer. And, and Gabby will attest to book sooner than later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So we're gonna, sold out each year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. August is a busy month there in, in Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. um, so, but uh, just quickly, I think you know Gabby and uh, is going to kind of cover some of our uh, you know suggested itineraries with some of the of the, the recommended independent vacations that are available uh, online and in our brochure. Uh, so, what what do you got here, <laughs> Northumberland? This is new, by the way. Yeah, these are these are new. So um, again, thank you for for following with us here. It's kind of hard to hard act to follow after Lisa and Maggie, but uh, I'll do my best. Um, this is one of our newest packages for this year. Uh, it pairs London with Northumberland. Uh, I know Lisa touched a little bit on that region. Um, it's quite a lot to see here. What's great about this package is that um, you get to explore London on your own, and then. Um, uh, uh, travel by train up to Newcastle, uh, where you will then be uh, met and greeted with, by a, a private uh, driving guide who will stay with, uh, with you for four days. Um, and that will allow you to explore the region uh, of Northumberland um, based in um, a little town uh, uh, just north of, of Newcastle called Longhorsley, um, beautiful property, four-star property that we use uh, called Linden Hall. Um, obviously, with the four-day itinerary, it's really up to the clients what they want to see and do. We do suggest uh, to visit certain things, such as um, Hadrian's Wall, uh, some of the Roman fortifications in the area, uh, Onnit Castle, which uh, I believe Lisa mentioned, um, and then also Durham uh, would be a really great uh, visit as well, which is kind of all in the area. Um, from there, um, you know, it, the clients actually have the option of either ending there or uh, continuing up north. They could go uh, up to Edinburgh, which is only about an hour and a half by train from mm -hmm. Newcastle, uh, or they could uh, return back to London at that point. Or 
go someplace else. Yeah, or go completely, away. exactly. <laughs> uh, this is a somewhat similar package in that um, it'll include a private driving guide. Um, it pairs London with Thornbury, which is uh, just on the uh, sort of uh, outskirts of uh, the Cotswolds. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, Tudor castle property, actually. Um, apparently, uh, Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn had one of their honeymoons there, so I don't know if you consider that one romantic. One of their many honeymoons. A mini honeymoon. Well, <laughs> one of their many, many honeymoons. Um, but uh, it's a proper Tudor castle, so uh, it pairs London again with, uh, you know, kind of Independence Day there, but uh, with a private tour afternoon tea. Um, in this case, the driver will actually take them from London all the way to uh, Thornbury, um, and they will have the driver for three days, um, and they can see the area, some of the suggested places to visit. Since they're traveling from London through the Cotswolds, obviously there's quite a lot to see. Uh, it could be kind of a um, um, Downton Abbey uh, filming locations or you know any of the other uh, fantastic locations along the way. On the way back, um, suggested itinerary might be, for example, if you stop through Bristol, uh, Salisbury, and then Stonehenge, uh, just to not double up uh, on some of the mm -hmm. sites. Cool. Uh, and then this is uh, our third newest for England, which is West Country Wonders. Um, this is a great one. I actually had a chance to visit this uh, last year, and uh, this region is absolutely marvelous. So uh, again, this appears London, uh, then travel by train from London to Plymouth, um, and then um, the clients will be met by a driver guide who will stay with them for four days. They stay in a, a beautiful little um, hotel called Dartington Hall, which is uh, just south of uh, Dartmoor um, National Park, I believe. It's a beautiful, uh, you know, very green, uh, it's an area of outstanding natural beauty is what it's called. Um, and then they um, actually will include a, a tour of Plymouth will, where they'll actually get a tasting of the gin distillery in Plymouth, which is a, a, a must to visit. Um, I'm not even a gin fan, and uh, I was after I, I had this tour, so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But, uh, it was uh, definitely well worth it. And of course, um, you know, plenty of things to see in the area. Um, obviously, once you're in the West Country, you can't miss Cornwall. So, you know, there's a lot of different places to visit, either Eden, uh, Eden Project or uh, Tintagel Castle, which has uh, some uh, King Arthur legends. Uh, supposedly, that's where he was born. Uh, so there's quite a lot of um, uh, things uh, to see in the area. Uh, just to go back, so, sorry, the so West Country Wonders. Um, you can either end uh, in Plymouth, obviously, um, there's a, an airport uh, nearby, or um, they can actually also um, continue on from there to uh, Southern Wales, for example, uh, with an easy train trip from Plymouth to uh, Cardiff uh, mm -hmm. via, via Bristol. So, yeah. uh, you know, plenty of opportunities there. And then go up north into northern Wales and, and hike the coast. Exactly. So that's where we're, now, we're at now. So this is actually one of our newest uh, packages, uh, Soft Adventure. Uh, it's a hiking trip. Um, in this case, uh, it'll include uh, round trip transfers either from Manchester or Liverpool, depending on what the gateway is there. Um, and it includes um, the five-night stay, uh, luggage transfers in between the cities, uh, an information packet, and daily breakfast. And um, you know, just from from not experience, but just from speaking to our supplier, uh, the hiking is pretty easy, um, mostly flat, but beautiful landscapes. You're basically hugging the coast, the north coast, so you get uh, a lot of uh, you know really beautiful scenery. It's about maybe 13 miles per day. Um, and this is pretty pretty easy to um, uh, modify as well. So if clients don't want to hike every day, uh, it is possible for a, a supplement to hire. A driver to maybe drive them, you know, uh, for a portion of it, um, and also if they want to hire a guide to be with them the whole time, that's also a possibility. Yeah, and these are all. I mean, everything that we're covering are suggested itineraries. So you know, being able to you know change and and, and manipulate them to fit your client's needs is what we do best. Right. Uh, this right here, we're really excited for. It's actually a, a North Coast 500 uh, self-drive package. Uh, so this is all of uh, the North Coast, as, as Maggie mentioned. It hugs the, uh, the highland uh, of, uh, of Scotland, um, starting in uh, Inverness. Um, then they go up toward the Applecross Peninsula um, and visit uh, quite a few places along the way. Uh, we include a um, Scottish Heritage Pass, uh, which um, allows them entrance to some of these places. 
uh, Corey Shalek Gorge uh, in particular to me looks absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. um, it's a beautiful gorge, uh, probably not very well known. Uh, I've never even heard of it until now, until I researched it, and it looks beautiful. So, um, and of course, there's uh, John O'Gross, which is the most northerly point uh, on the mainland, which is uh, fantastic. So. so now you know where Gabby's going the next time she ends up in Scotland. Yep. <laughs> uh, there's also a little cave that you can visit along the way called Smoo Cave, which I really, really want to visit. So, um, and not new for this year, but no. still outstanding. Still outstanding and very relevant to what we've just been talking about. Um, the land that inspired Outlander. Um, we're still selling this package. Again, this is a self-drive. Um, you actually do have the option, though, of uh, hiring a, a private driver uh, for all of these, really. Uh, although the North Coast um, 500, I mean, it's it's really, I, I want to go back to that because it is a little bit on the rugged side. Uh, mm -hmm. All the all the stays that we have for that are a three-star hotel, um, so not a lot of options of upgrading to four and five-star uh, in that region, unfortunately. But so no running a Ferrari and driving around? Right. Yeah. Uh, and certainly not for people who are um, unsure of, of driving on their yeah. own on the yeah. other side of the road. Yeah. So um, just you know, something to keep in mind there. Um, it's definitely going to require a bit of an adventurous spirit, mm -hmm. I think. Um, for the land that uh, inspired Outlander, of course, it includes some of the some of the places actually that we've talked about, like uh, Clorot, um and uh, uh, Culloden Battlefield, uh, Fort William, but quite a, quite a few places. What mess. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, it's, uh, it's a very great package. Um, we've sold quite a few of these and, and um, you know, really, really fantastic. Yeah. And um, I, I think that, you know, just to quickly mention that, you know, when you get in the car and you're, you know, everything seems natural when you're on the right side of the car. Right. And, you know, you don't, it, it pretty, it's pretty easy transition. I always want to mention that because I was scared the first time and it's, it's just like, oh, this is easy peasy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it, it depends on if you're, I mean, the traffic is, it won't be an issue. I mean, yeah. the most, the traffic jams you might run into are probably sheep, um, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, or highland cattle, per se. But, I mean, it's, you know, it, it, some of the roads can be um, mm -hmm. narrow and, yeah. you know, can, na navigating. It's an adventure. That. It is an adventure. Yeah, for sure. And then live um, like a clan chief. Live like a clan chief. So this is basically um, a lot of capital stays. Um, you know, you want to, for somebody who's not uh, afraid to splurge, somebody who wants to actually uh, have really interesting um, stays and, and beautiful properties, um, and of course, see uh, beautiful Scotland along the way. Again, this is, uh, it can be, either be done as a self-drive package or with a private driver uh, hire. Um, mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's a, uh, Again, quite a lot of visits. A higher end option. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Definitely something I want to do. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is our contact information. I'm not going to get into the, the details. It's right there. But I want to answer some of your guys' questions. So give me a hot second here to open up that wonderful window. And um, this is a good question. Um, you know, as far as Harry Potter and uh, offering some, you know, a, a Harry Potter focused um, a, a theme vacation. You've got a lot of different options in a variety of places. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right, Gabby? Yeah, we do. Um, well, we sell um, the tours uh, to the Warner Brothers uh, studio, which is fantastic. I've been there and just the amount of memorabilia uh, and the actual studios that you can see, um, you know, from the actual filming is fantastic. Uh, I'm happy to report that we we are actually in negotiations trying to um, acquire uh, the rights to sell the Jacobite steam train, which is the one that goes along the viaduct. Um, so um, stay tuned for that, uh, and uh, keep your fingers crossed that we'll be able to sell it. Um, and you know, just throughout, I mean, Oxford, we we actually mm -hmm. book. Um, we have uh, quite a few of the locations. Um, so I know it's it's kind of a big deal this year with the 20th anniversary of of the first book being... You're kidding me. That's 20 years. 20 years, you know, wow. there's a whole generation of kids out there that grew up with wow. them. Wow, so. wow. And yeah. now they're starting to travel. Right. And now they have their own money. Yeah. They're trying to book. Yeah. So, um, just in, in uh, overall, um, 
you know, what some of the, maybe talk, if you could talk a little bit about the Edinburgh uh, tattoo in a little bit more detail. Uh, we've got, what is that, a, a two-night package, three-night package? Three-night. Three-night package. We're all look, going into our brochure. Uh, <laughs> We have a lot of product to cover. No, it's, it's, it is two nights <laughs> with the option of, of, of uh, adding additional nights. Apologize for that, but um, we can do you know a three, four, or five star option uh, with the hotel stays. Um, they could they could add more nights. Yes, yeah. of course, either uh, at the beginning but, end, yeah. however it is that they want to do it. So uh, very customizable. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, this is maybe for you, Maggie, as far as the Edinburgh or the, the military tattoo, you know, because you yeah. have different clans, and then there's people from around uh, the world as well. Some of the of the uh, you know, is it okay to call them marching bands? I'm not sure what we would call them, uh, but yep. you know, is there a list of of who's doing what uh, throughout the the month of August? Um. So. You would like? Do you want to have a list of of the performance at the tattoo this year? Yeah, is that what you're yeah. asking? Yeah, um, the various. I'm not. I'm not too sure if that is already out there. Um, it is a mixed, uh, a mixed group each year. So sometimes we'll have, uh, mar like you said, marching bands from from um, New Zealand, China, anywhere. Um, I can find out for you. Um, I'll just have to speak to the um, director of the tattoo. David Afri. So um, I'll see if I can find that out. If anyone is interested in finding out um, what night a particular clan is featured, I do have that information. So I will be able to share that. So if anyone has a client who has, for example, um, a Campbell background, I'll be able to say, okay, that is actually the 12th of August that they'll be in the spotlight. So um, I can okay. share that around if you want. But okay. I don't actually know uh, who is performing yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wonderful. Wonderful. Because uh, that's exactly what um, this trial agent was looking for. Yeah. I'll so, make sure that uh, I share that with you, and you can you can forward that on. Is that okay? Yeah. No. No. It's it's okay. No worries. No worries. Um, just so um, you know, we're a little bit more clear. This this uh, webinar will be recorded and I'll be uh, sending it off to uh, all of you who, uh, who attended and those who didn't attend. Um, but, um, you know, I think that the, you know, the, the interesting, um, one of these interesting questions here that I just went over as far as, you know, a lot of people are interested in genealogy and uh, the family roots. Um, and you, I think, uh, Maggie, you mentioned as far as Scotland is concerned, you guys have a section of your website that's dedicated yes. to that? Absolutely. Uh, we've got a lot of, of um, a lot of information on our our website, uh, which is uh, visitscotland.com. Um, we're actually at the moment producing uh, some more ancestral um, content because it's a, our year of history, heritage, archaeology, and a huge part of that is ancestry. We've also just launched a, a video with um, which is great, and it follows Ian Walker, who is a genealogist. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll just make sure that I'll, I'll outline all of that information when I follow up with you guys. Um, there's a wealth of research facilities in Scotland for your clients to explore. So there's up to the level of, like I said, Scotland's people, which is here in Edinburgh, which, ha which ho houses all of the records um, dating back centuries, uh, dating centuries back. Um, we have a list of genealogists that, work with your, that could work with your clients and help them explore. Um, we have um, we are developing an, a clan map where you can see where the different clans are originated from. So there's loads and loads of content on ancestry, and I just want to um, encourage everyone to just get in touch with me if you if they are getting stuck with uh, with their ancestral research because there is a, a wealth of information here. Um, mm -hmm. And we are actually, we're going to be, we, we do our own like webinars as well. So there might be in the future that we can do one specifically on ancestry if you'd like. Okay. What I'd like to add also, I mean, not to, you know, really uh, push too much, but uh, both Visit Britain and Visit Scotland, their YouTube channels are amazing. Uh, so if you have a few minutes to kill at lunchtime or in between calls or whatever you have to do, 
uh, I highly suggest that you go and check out some of the videos that they make. They're very inspirational and very, um, you know, just informative. So I really recommend that to anybody who really wants yeah. to learn more about that's Absolutely, and we encourage people to, to share the videos and use them for themselves as well because obviously it's created and if they want to put that on their own site or on their own channels, then they're, they're more than welcome to do that too. Oh, great. Yeah, I can include a, a link to that too on the follow-up. Okay. So a lot of people are, uh, and you'll see this, um, Maggie and, and Lisa are asking some questions as far as making sure that they get the link, all the different links that you guys provided throughout the presentation. And you know, I think that there's also a couple of really good questions um, you know, all together as far as are we able to provide private services and, and then also pricing. Um, you know, everything that we do uh, to you know overall uh, throughout Europe as well as, as uh, Great Britain can provide, you know, we provide private services. The same is true for Central South America and, and Asia as well. So, you know, anytime that you have a client who does want that very personalized uh, touch and has a good sized budget, uh, we certainly can, can help in that. I mean, every day, uh, both on the web and uh, in the call center here, you know, we're making those arrangements. And, you know, the, I think the greater challenge sometimes is trying to find shared services right. uh, in, 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 in different places besides the major destinations that we provide. And we have a great uh, local operator that we work with very closely. And uh, so generally, uh, whenever I ask them for anything, you know, sometimes I get a request for things that are just, in my mind, like, wow, this is kind of a once-in-a-lifetime thing. I've never really had a request for this before, and I send it off to them, and usually they come back with no problem. You know, just they'll give me a quote for pricing, and, yeah. you know, they're, they're very, very good at, at what they do. So mm -hmm. we, I have to tip my hat off to them. Yeah. And uh, so we'll, uh, there's a couple of questions here that uh, we'll follow up on um, uh, individually uh, that I think need some you know, individual attention. So uh, I think, you know, overall, um, I think we've answered most of the questions. Uh, we'll certainly get to those uh, individually that need our attention or uh, Maggie or, or Lisa's attention uh, after this webinar. Any closing statements you guys want to make or anything else you feel like you didn't get to say that you really have to say? I, I just wanted to say thank you for everybody taking the time to join us and come soon. <laughs> Completely <OMG. agree. laughs> Come soon, and it doesn't matter what time of year because it, it literally whether you go spring, summer, winter, fall, there are always tons of things to do. And if it is during you know winter or fall when it's when it's cooler or spring even, um, go to the cozy pubs. Take advantage of you know sitting by the fire and, and cozying up with your family and friends. It's just a, a great destination, and we, we can't wait Absolutely. to welcome your clients. Absolutely. Completely agree. Yeah. All right. Well, yes. thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate your uh, attention and um, all the wonderful information that Maggie and Lisa shared, as well as Gabby. Um, you know, you can find us online. You can email us at requests at avantidestinations.com uh, for any of the, uh, you know, as far as a quote is concerned or if you have a current booking uh, that you need to just make some small adjustments on, um, we can take care of it via requests at Avanti Destinations and you can always give us a call. Our general 800 number is 800-422-5053. So thanks a bunch everybody. Take care. Have a great day and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.